Hello, welcome back. And today I'm going to discuss your blood glucose level and what effect your nervous system has on your blood glucose and your blood glucose on your nervous system. I've been doing a science experiment by wearing a blood glucose monitor here and technology is great these days. I had my graph paper out ready to graph all the points when I took my measurement, but actually you can just scan your phone and there's an app and they graph it all for you. So I can really see the trends of when my glucose is spiking and dropping throughout the day and what effect that has on me intuitively and seeing it on the numbers, pairing that up with um, actual instances during the day. And so we know that sugar spikes our glucose levels, right? And we told you eat too much sugar, it's gonna spike and fall and that's when we get all angry and hungry and headaches and all these different things because we're taking so much energy from our body to just try and regulate our nervous system. And if we are non-diabetic, we have a pancreas that secretes insulin so that when our glucose spikes, the insulin attaches to our cells to open up space so that the glucose can go into the cells to be stored away and recover our glucose level to a normal functioning level. And so what I have found thus far by wearing this monitor is nutrition, my nutrition game is on point. And when I eat a no sugar diet and when I'm eating well-rounded meals with fats and proteins and a little bit of carbohydrates, that's what works for me right now in my body, my glucose is just swimming nice and smooth. But if I eat two dates, for example, and we think, well, dates are healthy, right? but they have a very high sugar content. So I ate two dates with some almond butter, hoping to have the almond butter fat balance out some of that sugar spike that's happening. Well, nope. My blood glucose level shot up 10 points and I had a headache, which I know very well that sugar does not work for me. And now I can see on a graph how much this affects me, but within like, 20, 30 minutes, again, my insulin um, abilities were able to come in and lower my glucose back down to a normal range for me. And I love ice cream dearly. So I had some ice cream because in, ice cream doesn't bother me. I don't get a headache, I don't feel nauseous, no bloating, nothing. But obviously that doesn't mean I should be eating ice cream every single day because this is just one metric. I'm just looking at my blood glucose level here. And so I had my ice cream and sure enough, my blood glucose was like surfing nice and smooth. To me, that was like, great, I should just eat meat and ice cream all the time. No, that just means that there's so much fat content in the ice cream that it's balancing out the sugar content. So that's not uh, spiking your glucose levels there. So food, that's great. You know, now working out we are told, well, working out will lower your blood sugar level because you're utilizing all that energy. Well, when you actually measure it, it's the exact opposite. For, again, non-diabetic in my personal experience and others that I have spoken with who've done this as well. Because when you're exercising, you're exerting yourself. So you are stressing your system. You're releasing endorphins, you're releasing dopamine, all these feel-good chemicals. And that's actually going to spike your glucose level because you're in a sympathetic, stressful state. And that's fine because in our body, when we are in a sympathetic state, the body thinks that we need to run away for survival purposes. And so what does it do? It mobilizes sugar, it increases your heart rate, increases your blood pressure and all these different things. Now the, the trick or the, the secret here is, well then, is the exercise not good for you? No, 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 no. Um, sometimes we do need that boost, but when our blood sugar spikes, if we have a healthy system, very soon after the blood sugar will come back down to its normal levels. And that's really what we're looking at here. Are you able to recover from these stressful situations? So like when you go in for a stress test, they might put you on a treadmill or something and have you run, right? And they're checking your heart rate and your blood pressure and all these different things. And it's not necessarily how high um, your number is going, that could be very different for each individual, but can you recover? Are you resilient? Because that's what we want. Health is really a metric of our resiliency because there's gonna be stressful situations that are gonna happen, but can we recover from them and move on? And so this again comes back to that nervous system regulation. Well, how do we regulate this nervous system now that we can see through the metrics of our blood glucose level that are so closely related to this nervous system spike and fall? For example, anxiety. 
I am the queen of anxiety at times, and that absolutely affects my blood glucose level. And the reverse, my blood glucose level affects my anxiety, aka the nervous system. So the food that you are putting into your body, if that's spiking and dropping your glucose levels a ton, well, that's going to cause your nervous system to go into a tizzy and then you're going to have these moods of depression and anxiety and uh, anger, right? Because your nervous system is going wild. So it's not necessarily one always causes the other. I feel like it can go both ways. So, for example, the other night, it was like 3 a.m., I wake up with my mind racing through a thousand different conversations that I want to have with myself or other people and it is stressing me out of the wazoo. I'm sweating. I feel nauseous. In the midst of all of this, I'm like, ooh, let me check my blood glucose level because that's what one does in the middle of an anxiety attack, right? So I checked it and sure enough, my glucose level was so low, so hypoglycemic, it was undetectable. So it was below 50 milligrams per deciliter. And so I got up, I went to the bathroom, I drank some water, and I started doing my breathing exercises. And within about 30, 40 minutes of this whole escapade, I checked my blood glucose level again, boop, and I was back up to my good baseline. So what is this telling us? Well, did my anxiety cause the glucose to drop or did the lack of um, energy stores cause the anxiety? In this specific case, for my purposes, it was the low glucose, the hypoglycemia is what sent my nervous system into, oh my gosh, you're gonna die, you don't have enough sugar in your body, into this anxious state. So the thoughts that were streaming in my mind have now combined with this sympathetic nervous system state, and voila, you have your 3 a.m. wake up staring at the ceiling, oh my gosh, what do I do with all of these thoughts? So, what does this mean for you? Balance your nervous system. Regulate your nervous system through your food, through your breath work, through your exercise. All three very good ways that you can make sure that your body is able to cope with these rise and falls of the nervous system that we should have. We should be in sympathetic and parasympathetic going back and forth all day long. And this experiment has also showed me that everybody is very different with the numbers. There's no right number on the glucose level, right? But when you measure it long enough, you find where your baseline is. And for me, I have a very low baseline and very quickly because of this autoimmune situation I have that's attacking my brain, um, it is hard for my brain to function properly and therefore my glucose levels are very much affecting that. And so I have to eat a certain way and work out quite often, do all these things so that my glucose level stays normal. Otherwise it plummets and then my cerebellum does not function pretty much at all. It starts to like shut down on me. And so then I'm constantly chasing this glucose cycle spike, which isn't great. And so it's something that I'm working on and I'm seeing improvements for sure, but it's a long process. And you too, if you are dealing with some sort of mood disorder or um, weight struggles, right? All these different things. Really be conscious of what you're putting into your body and how you're regulating your stress because they are so very much interconnected.